But if you feel you have something to say to the world, he said, how else can you say it nowadays? Poetry? Nobody listens. Books? Nobody reads them. Why write a novel for 200 people when you can reach an audience of millions? Good evening, Jonathan Coe. Good the evening. The question you ask in Mr. Wilder and me will be my first question. Why did you write novels and why did you write Born Again? Um, I, I write novels for a, a number of reasons, uh, most of them very personal, and this in some ways is, uh, is one of my most personal books. Uh, I guess I began uh, writing this book as a response to uh, the death of my mother in, in June 2020, uh, and at the same time this was in the middle of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. And uh, you know this pandemic felt uh, to us, to everybody who lived through it, I think, you know, uh, uh, the latest uh, in a series of uh, social and political difficulties which we hadn't asked for and which would just seem to be coming upon us in a in a torrent. Um, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd been contemplating a book uh, about uh, my country, Britain, and why it was in the. Uh, why it had put itself in the position it had uh, at this time, how the COVID pandemic was going to uh, affect that and maybe complicate it. And uh, then with the death of my mother, I decided that uh, this story could be told through a retelling and a fictionalization of her life because uh, she had lived from just before the Second World War to, uh, to the time of the COVID pandemic. And this was almost exactly the period that I wanted to write about. From English to French, from a book to a movie, from thoughts to music cues, or a writer's mind to paper, what do you believe you translate? Words, notions, emotions, memories, desires, or something else? Um, uh, emotions, first of all, and uh, for me, if a book, or a film, or a poem, or a piece of music, any work of art doesn't have an emotional impact on the reader then uh, it's it's failed essentially so uh, I want readers to uh, feel at the end of one of my books that an emotional shift has taken place uh, of one sort or another uh, maybe the book has made them happy maybe the book has uh, upset them uh, it could be any of these things uh, of course the novel is also a a construct of language. A language conveys meaning, so you can uh, you can also discuss uh, ideas, um, philosophies, politics in a novel. All of these things, which which give it an extra dimension, but also to me a, a part of it uh, can be can dilute its power. And part of the reason that uh, I love music above all the other arts including uh, literature is because of the purity with, with, with which sounds outside language can convey emotion. So sometimes the ideas with, with which I fill my novels uh, I feel are getting in the way of the emotional impact which is the main point. Other times, luckier times, the two things work in harness and uh, you really don't know uh, whether a book has uh, worked in that way until long after you've finished it. What do you think of the title of the French edition of Born Vio? Le Royaume des Unis, the mm -hmm. Disunited Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, well, it was my suggestion mm -hmm. when, um, when my French publisher, uh, Gallimard, said that they uh, didn't think it would be possible to publish it with the English title, which is Bourneville, the name of the village near Birmingham where the, uh, the book is set. Um, I think it's a it's an appropriate title because it gestures uh, very clearly towards the the country that I'm writing about, or rather the conglomeration of countries that make up the United Kingdom, uh, and it also gestures towards the fact that it's uh, a divided society, possibly no more divided than uh, than any other country at the moment, but divided along. Uh, uh, cultural lines, social lines with divisions which seem in the last few years to have become more entrenched and more violent. 
uh, and I wanted to explore what the roots of that might be. Mm. Brussels is significant in Bourneville. What does it mean to you to present this book to the audience tonight in Belgium? Hmm. Uh, well, I'm very uh, attached to my Belgian readers. They've been very good to me over the years, very loyal. They were even patient and tolerant when I attempted to write a book set uh, in Brussels itself with uh, Expo 58. Um, tonight is different, I think, because the sections of the book uh, set in Brussels are actually set in and around the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, to me, is not uh, Brussels itself. It's a, it's a city within a city. Mm -hmm. And it feels, to me, this is just my impression, I don't know if it's true, it feels curiously detached from the rest of from the rest of uh, uh, the Brussels itself. So, you know, people use the word Brussels in other countries as shorthand for the EU. These decisions are taken in Brussels. So that's the Brussels I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Not the real Brussels, which is the great, uh, the great city that we find ourselves in the center of here at Tropism. Books, movies, and music are part of the creator that you are, Jonathan Coe. What would you invite viewers to read, watch, and listen to tonight? Uh, tonight? Yes, one book, one movie, one music. Oh, uh, okay. Um, well, uh, for a book, I would uh, go back to a book which is, uh, has for some reason very much been on my mind uh, when talking about Bourneville, even though it seems to have no relationship to it, which is Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, mm -hmm. uh, which I still think is one of the greatest um, uh, examinations of the one of the great problems of the human condition, which is maintaining the equilibrium between uh, the rational and the emotional, and uh, you know that is that is a problem which we wrestle with as individuals every day, and which also in Britain we wrestle with as a country these days. Uh, for a movie, of course, I'd invite people to watch a Billy Wilder movie mm -hmm. because they're the best. Uh, maybe The Apartment, which is his masterpiece, in which uh, for me, contains a, a balance of comedy and tragedy, uh, farce and melodrama, which is absolutely perfect and have never been surpassed. Uh, for a piece of music, I'd choose a piece that is mentioned in Bourneville by uh, a Welsh composer who's not hugely well known uh, outside the UK, and that is Herbert Howells, who wrote a huge a uh, choral piece called Hymnus Paradisi, which has a connection with Bourneville because it's also was inspired by grief at the death of a family member, in, in this case his young son. Uh, and to me it's one of the modern masterpieces of uh, European music. I don't know why it's not better known and it's, uh, it's heartbreaking in the best possible way. Thank you very much. Thank you.